Now, loving God, send your Holy Spirit down upon us, that hearing your word we might understand it, and that understanding your word we might go forth and do it. Amen. So if I've talked about some aspect of this before, forgive me, but I do know that some of you are like me and you're fans of the Great British Bake Off which is called the Great British Baking Show in this country because, you know, you can't get the rights to everything. If you haven't seen the show, the premise is pretty simple. They have a contest, thousands of people all over England and Scotland and Ireland and Wales all enter into the contest and eventually 12 are selected to be contestants, bakers. They audition so that they can gather in a big tent on a classic country estate for 12 or for 10 summers, uh, 10 summer days. There's two judges and two hosts who set a series of baking challenges, and the contestants (coughs) rise, excuse me, rise to meet the challenge. Now, those 12 contestants are eliminated one at a time until a final three emerge. Each week of the contest has a different emphasis. It might be pie one week, cake another, bread a third, and inevitably the weak areas in the contestants' skills are exposed because some are better at baking than they are at pies. Some really hate making crackers or or biscuits, as they call them in England. But those weak areas come out, and every week someone has to say goodbye, and they they have to confront the fact that they don't know everything about baking. The challenge in this contest is to keep one's cool and to bring experience and common sense to the tent. Paradoxically, it's not easy to keep your cool when you forgot to turn on the oven. It's happened. The winner receives a crystal cake platter and the title of Britain's Best Baker. Now, the common element faced by the contestants in each challenge is the not the element of skill or having the right ingredients or a great recipe, but the common element is time. Now, it might seem like a piece of cake to bake a loaf of bread. Baking is science, after all. Millions of loaves served as experiments as recipes developed, and bakers eventually wrote down the correct formula. So following a recipe should yield a consistent loaf of bread. But when you have a set interval of time in which to bake that loaf of bread from start to finish, and that period of time is intentionally about 10 minutes shorter than the time that you really need, and one misstep can result in having to start over with your dough, leaving no time for proper testing and proofing and baking at a correct temperature, the results can be catastrophically, comically bad. can result in sweet rolls that refuse to come out of tins in one piece. Or cakes that dry out one's mouth with the first bite. Or cookies made with salt instead of sugar. It's also happened. The great equalizer in the great bake-off is, in fact, time. Seeing the frantic pace of baking creativity can feel overwhelming to us as viewers. How can all this slop turn into something you'd feel proud to bring to the table? How can this mess emerging from the oven be transformed into something that can stand up in a contest and be evaluated as good. It's only when everyone stops their work and plates their creations that they can take in what has come out of the ovens. And it's only when that happens that those of us who are watching can appreciate the finished product. The cooling rack is the place where the beauty and joy of a good cake or a good bread can be admired. 
it's really, really hard for us to just stop and look from time to time. We're action-oriented. We want to be part of things. It's really hard to step back and look. Resting, well, that sounds really luxurious and unreachable. And more so if you have special responsibility for the care and feeding of others. Ask anyone who's currently parenting a toddler. Is that a a six-day-a-week thing? Is that an eight-hour-a-day thing? Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm-mm. Life is kinetic. Life is always in motion. Life has needs, and so do our children. Even if we wouldn't want life to stop, there, there are times when I suspect it would be great if we had a pause button in the care and upbringing of our children. For those of you who bear great responsibility in your employment, it may seem just about impossible to take a meaningful break, maybe even unthinkable. You may find fulfillment in the routines and tasks that you encounter every day in your work, and that's great. Finding time to stop, finding time to unplug, time to take in what you have done may be more difficult. In an era where we feel pressed for more efficiency, it's just hard to find that pause button. In a time when we're expected to do more with less, to throw fewer people at a problem, and yet yield the same or greater results, it may seem impossible to take a break. The element of time, that element of time that presses on us, inducing anxiety and uncertainty, Time itself can make rest difficult. We fear we're going to miss out on something. We transfer that fear to other areas of our life. We don't know how to get off the endless walkway, how to find the pause button. And so we turn to one of our origin stories. One of our origin stories found way at the beginning of our Bibles. And turning to that origin story for an alternative to constantly being in motion yields a surprise. God took time. If you were raised as I was, in a faith tradition that ascribed superpowers to God, you're going to wonder... Why would God need to take time? God lives out of time. God is eternal. Why would God need a break? Why would God need an interval? If the story that we heard this morning about our Creator needing a rest is what we're considering in light of those superpowers, then the story makes no sense. Why does God need a seventh day? Why does God need anything? But I think it's the rhythm of creation that's the underlying beat of this story. I think that we're living in a kind of rhythm, a kind of beat. And that beat includes one that is a rest. Musicians, you know the power of silence. You know that a rhythm repeated over and over again with no punctuation whatsoever eventually becomes wallpaper. But you also know that there's nothing more powerful in a 4-4 bar than seven beats of music and one beat of rest. In the seven-four bar of a story, of the creation story we have in front of us, there are six complex beats. Light and darkness, day and night, sea and land, 
vegetation, creatures, humanity. There's such complex things going on in the first six beats of that 7-4 measure. And the seventh beat of the measure, it's a rest. Full stop. Breathe. There's no true creation story without that rest, without that pause. There's no creation without a pause to take in and bless what has created, been created because there on the cooling rack the wonders of the world are waiting to be appreciated. The light and dark, the sea and the dry land, the vegetation, the animals, and even us. The blessing of the Creator's vision in every detail in that pause is fully realized. And on the holy day that's been created in that pause, we see the world as something different. We see the world not as a big round sphere chuck full of resources to be exploited, but rather we see it as a living biosphere of rhythms, the light and darkness, the life and death, decay, and renewal and on the cooling rack of the holy day even God rests when our work is set aside even for a day we receive that same blessing there's times when we need to put our work on the cooling rack and let it rest let it settle let it be appreciated Times when we need to take in the blessing of work that engages us. Times when we need to appreciate the blessing of home that renews us. Time when we need to celebrate the blessing of projects that challenge us. The act of seeing our lives at rest for an interval equips us with shalom. Shalom is the same peace that we offer to each other each and every week. But it's more than that. Shalom is also wholeness and harmony and prosperity and tranquility in the Hebrew language. Shalom is about the unity of creation. Shalom is about that rest where God blessed the creation. It's a state of being. It's a state of renewal. When we are living in a state of shalom, we take in the wonder of what surrounds us, the joy of encountering fellow humans and the world. We take in everything of which we are a part. Shalom gives us what we need to view the world through blessing and blessed vision. We acknowledge that God took an interval of rest even though the work did not require it, even though God did not require it. We accept that we need to take that rest in order to appreciate and realize the blessings that surround us. And through that moment of shalom rest, we see the opportunities to become a blessing to the world. On this quiet summer morning, we have a chance to hit the pause button, a moment for silence. And so today in particular, I invite you to take in how you have been blessed in this world. Today I invite you to experience quiet shalom for just a bit to take the seventh beat of rest.
on this day, I wish you Shabbat Shalom, Sabbath rest for your vision of life. May you continue to build God rest into your life. May you be blessed by your work, your community, your family. May you be a blessing to all you meet this day. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Let us be in reflection together.